Hi everyone! Welcome back to my guide for speedrunning Resident Evil 7 New Game Easy on the PC. New Game Easy means beating the game as fast as possible using all the vanilla weapons provided such as the knife, the G17 handgun, and the shotgun. This category is super fun and keeps you on your toes, as you have to make sure to execute all strats with the minimal ammo provided on the route. It's one of my favorite categories to run and I can't wait to help you run it too! I have timestamped different parts of the main house in case you want to go to a specific part. If you're coming from my how to get started video, we just made it out of the guest house and we're getting dragged over to the main house. We're now here at the infamous, iconic dinner table scene. Probably one of the best, if not best, moments of the game. We meet the deranged Baker family and see them do some pretty twisted shenanigans. And of course, we have our grandma doing her best resident sleeper impression. Once the cutscene resolves, hold down A to get out of the chair. Make your way down the hallway and open the door to the right as you're running by. Run straight down the hallway with your camera facing down to the right and aim slightly towards the floor. This will help you avoid getting grabbed by Jack. As soon as you can, grab the hatch key, then run over and use it on the ox door. This will help trigger the deputy cutscene later, so be sure to do these interactions right now. Turn around and head down the hallway from where you came. If Jack is giving you a hard time, just spam the space bar to block. Go through the door on the left, which should still be open from earlier. Run up to the hatch door, crouch, and use the hatch key. To be safe, turn around immediately as you do this, since sometimes Jack will teleport behind you if he's past a certain point in the hallway. To avoid him chopping off your leg, just be sure you're crouched and turned around after using the hatch key as an extra layer of safety. We'll be taking a nice tour of this crawl space, and we'll be arriving to our first save room of the game. Climb out of the crawl space and open the door. Make sure to answer the phone as soon as it rings. If you have a high performance PC and it's hitting around 300 FPS, you may get the phone skip, where the phone rings immediately after climbing out of the crawl space. If you're lucky enough to get it, it'll save about 2 seconds. But don't fret, because most runners and myself don't get this often. We're just letting you know that this particular skip is possible. After the phone call with Zoe, leave the laundry room and graze against the pillar near the trash can. Since you used the hatch key on the aux door earlier, the deputy will spawn in the window. After we talk with the deputy who doesn't believe we're in much danger, he'll reward us with a handy dandy knife. Thanks man. With the knife equipped, head towards the garage. Slash open the crate to the right of you and keep moving forward. This contains handgun bullets that we'll be picking up later. Interact with the taped box outside the garage and press the button. Watch the cutscene, and as soon as it ends, we'll begin the Jack 1 boss fight. When you gain control of Ethan, slash Jack a few times. Run behind Jack and pick up the G17 handgun, then run over to the desk to pick up the car key. Interact with the car door to get inside. When Jack breaks the shelf, interact with the car door again to exit the car. As Jack is wrecking the car door, start slashing away at Jack. You should do at least 8 slashes as he's getting inside. When Jack starts the car, equip your G17 handgun and shoot Jack in the head 3 times. You'll know that you have done enough damage to Jack when he throws his hands up on the steering wheel. The car will crash, catch fire, and Jack will take his time getting out. Remember our good friend menuing? During this important downtime, we'll be doing some menuing by deleting the car key and moving your cursor to the right one space. When Jack is walking towards you, make sure you're crouched. Stab Jack's left leg by holding down right click, then tap left click. While Jack is downed, slash at Jack's legs until the car explodes. Be sure he doesn't grab you, as this will lose you time. After Jack shows you something wonderful and you hear more of Ethan's favorite word, climb up the ladder. At the top of this area, go to the left, then pick up the shotgun shells from the shelf. Walk over to the other shelf and interact with the picture frame to unscrew the aux statuette. Look over to the left and interact with the shelf, then interact with the picture frame again to pick up the aux statuette. As you're leaving the garage, pick up the handgun bullets from the crate you broke earlier and go down the hallway. Use the aux statuette on the aux door to open up the main hall. Run over to the grandfather clock and pick up the clock pendulum. This is the only item you can pick up and move immediately after interacting with it, so as soon as you press confirm, turn your camera to the right to get a head start on your movement. Head up the stairs to your right and head for the bathroom at the end of the hall. As you're making your way there, make sure your G17 handgun is equipped. 
When you get to the bathroom, interact with the bathtub to drain the moldy water, open up the drawer in the back, and pick up the handgun bullets. You'll then want to turn back around and stand in front of the bathtub. As the water is draining, feel free to double check your menuing to make sure your cursor is hovered over the clock pendulum. When you're ready to go, pick up the wooden statuette and interact with the door. This will begin the setup for the Out of Bounds. The Out of Bounds is a very useful strat that brings you to the basement and allows you to pick up the red key card earlier than intended. In normal playthroughs of the game, you have to go into the basement three different times. The Out of Bounds makes you go down only twice. It saves about 20 seconds, which may not seem like a lot, but it's incredibly useful and highly suggested if you're looking to save the most time. Plus, it's fun as hell and satisfying to pull off, so why not? Immediately after Jack's cutscene, aim your gun to the left and shoot Jack's left thigh. Don't waste any time, just do this as soon as you're able. Leave the bathroom and drop down the broken staircase. Open the double doors, run past the dining room, go into the living room, and use the clock pendulum on the grandfather clock. Since your menuing is properly set up, you can just spam confirm. While the clock is ringing, open your inventory and move your cursor two spots to the right so it's hovered over the wooden statuette. Lastly, pick up the white dog head. Jack should have dropped down the broken staircase by now, so as you're heading back to the hallway, shoot one to two bullets on the floor to get his attention. Do not shoot any more than this because, spoilers, these are the only handgun bullets that will get you through the whole run. Make your way to the main hall, but don't start going down the hallway until Jack is actively walking towards you and near this door. If Jack is placed here, or here, or is anywhere else except here, he will bust through the wall in the hallway. Not only does it lose time, but you will not be able to go for the out of bounds anymore because he will be too close for you to complete the shadow puzzle. Anyways, make your way down the hallway with Jack actively pursuing you. At the end of the hall, turn around and shoot Jack's left thigh. Jack should stagger onto his knee, so during this crucial moment, head over to the shadow puzzle and use the wooden statuette on it. This shadow puzzle is very lenient and doesn't need to be exact, so swipe your mouse to the upper left a little bit and hit confirm. Turn around and stand near the table, right in front of the double doors. As we're waiting for Jack, we'll be doing some more quick menuing. Open your inventory, move your handgun bullets one spot to the right, then move your cursor one space below the white dog head. Your inventory should look like this. Jack should bust through the doors, and since you're standing at this spot, he should pursue you immediately. Run over to the staircase to the left, and go to the top. When Jack walks onto the first step of the stairs, shoot his left leg. While he's downed, run to his right to get past him. To get past him easier, open up your graphic settings and swap your FPS to 30. We can get to this menu by hitting Escape, Options, Graphics, and changing the frame rate from Variable to 30. As soon as you're past Jack, swap your frame rate back to Variable. We'll need to stand at a specific spot to go out of bounds, so we'll be standing in between these two pillars. While I'm here, I look ahead at this spot on the wall and wait for Jack. Once he gets to you, he will spin you around, and congrats! You've successfully been thrown out of bounds. But wait, we're not done yet. Follow this exact path near these outside pillars and follow the patio line. You don't want to be too far to the left or else the basement stairway will not load properly. Follow the edge of the stairway and line up with these edges to drop back in bounds. Additionally, for a more consistent setup, you can do a pause buffer to load into the basement. Follow this path and right before you drop down, swap your FPS to 60. As soon as Ethan drops, make sure to pause, and as soon as the basement loads, swap your FPS back to variable. Once you drop back in bounds, open the cabinet on the right, and as it's opening, pick up the red key card on the table. Turn back towards the cabinet, pick up the enhanced handgun ammo, and leave the room. Head to the incinerator room and pick up the strong chem fluid on the floor underneath the first table. There's a molded here, but just shoot him in the face with one bullet. Solve the puzzle by interacting with the red hand furnace door and the last furnace door, but before you leave, pick up the gunpowder on the floor. Finally, interact with the furnace door that just opened. 
We'll be making some enhanced handgun ammo while the furnace door is opening, so this will require some swift menuing. As the furnace door is opening, open your inventory, and your cursor should be on top of the strong chem fluid. Select the strong chem fluid, then select the wrench icon to combine. Move your cursor to hover over the gunpowder, then hit confirm. This will create enhanced handgun ammo. Then, move your cursor to the right once so it's over this empty space. Move Ethan backwards a couple spaces, then pick up the dissection room key. Yes, it's scary, and there's some scary moldy boys in here. But if we do this fast enough, they will leave us alone. Sweet. Make your way through the boiler room and shoot the molded in the face with one bullet. Run past him and use the dissection room key on the door. As you're going through the morgue, change your ammo from regular to enhanced by hitting G on the keyboard. We'll know we'll have our enhanced ammo loaded by seeing the plus sign on our ammo counter on the bottom right. Make your way up the stairs and interact with the red dog head. This will begin the Jack 2 boss fight. Before initiating the Jack 2 boss fight, let's talk briefly about quick firing. Quick firing is simply a quicker way to shoot with your G17 handgun. You'll need to alternate between firing while aiming down sights and firing the gun regularly. Essentially, you're just alternating your right clicks and left clicks in a somewhat rhythmic motion. When you execute this skillfully, you'll land twice as many shots into your enemies in a quicker amount of time. We'll be doing this on both Jack 2 and Marge 2, so feel free to practice quick firing during any of your practice sessions. After Jack Spartan kicks you into the morgue, Run to the shelf on the left, then aim carefully to shoot Jack in the face four times with your enhanced ammo. Run behind him, shoot the growth on his back six times with your quick firing, then reload. While Jack is walking over to the fence, open your inventory to do some menuing. We'll be moving the white dog head, red dog head, and the red key card to these spaces, then move our cursor to this spot. Your inventory should look like this. After this, Pick up the chainsaw. Once Jack starts attacking, crouch, then stand up and left click to do a light chainsaw attack. Hold right click and left click to do a heavy chainsaw attack onto Jack's head. After this animation, run up to Jack and hit left click immediately to do another light chainsaw attack. We'll then get as close as possible to Jack while crouched and do a heavy attack into the growth. If you do this correctly, Jack will die and you will skip his death animation. Additionally, if you're running on Sarah D, Jack's absurdly long animation where his half-blown torso walks around will be cut, and we can leave the morgue immediately upon his death. When you leave the morgue, pick up the shotgun shells on the shelf to the right. Go up the stairs, interact with the locker, and pick up the shotgun shells inside. Head back through the boiler room, through the room with the bathtubs, and head to the left outside the door. Interact with the screen door, then pick up the scorpion key. Head back upstairs and use the scorpion key at the end of the hall. Go up the staircase to the right and head to the recreation room upstairs, which is the first door to the right. Use the scorpion key on the door inside the room, and while this door is unlocking, Open up your inventory and move your cursor so it's on the white dog head. Once inside the room, pick up the shotgun shells on the bed, then turn around to pick up the broken shotgun. Walk to the book on the other side of the room and interact with it to pick up the blue dog head. Leave the room, head downstairs, and interact with the big dog head door to use all three dog heads. While this door is unlocking, we'll be doing one last bit of menuing. Open up your inventory and move the broken shotgun to the third weapon slot here, then move your cursor to the fourth slot on the second row so your inventory looks like this. And sweet! We made it out of the main house! Well done and GG's! Be ready for the old house and Marguerite because, oof, that's gonna be one wild ride. <laughs>